I'm here with Dina Wakely, and she's talking about abstract expressionism. So what the heck is that? It's art that doesn't have a representational figure. So like a face, a dog, a horse, a landscape. It's color and shape and texture. So what's the difference between regular abstract and abstract expressionism? What is the expressionism part of it? It's you can see the hand of the artist and have it give you, make you feel. Oh, you're expressing something, you're feeling something. And I see your beautiful art, which does make me feel all kinds of things. It's really beautiful. And you've said it's unbelievably easy. It is easy. There are many ways to make an abstract painting. This is not the way, this is a way. And if you're brand new, I think this is a good place to start. And one of the ways is to use a composition that you, is guaranteed success. So I call these the hotel compositions because you know you walk into your hotel room and you know what? Does that not look familiar as the art that's oh. Hanging oh over your, oh, your hotel you bed. You are a genius. It, this is, I've never thought about it, but this is brilliant. It, it, it is a composition that you know will work. You're not just kind of throwing stuff on the canvas. That comes later, the more experience okay. you get. So at the beginning, choose something that you know is going to work. I think I'll choose this one today. And go ahead and sketch it on a canvas. This is gessoed already. If the canvas tells you that it's pre-gessoed, it's a lie. Really? <laughs> I think so. I think uh, you need to see the hand of the artist in the work. So my hand gets in there you know, with gesso, even in the underlayer. And I've heard you say before that gesso is the underwear for your artwork. That's right. You put it on so you don't chafe. So, Very cool. <laughs> so you know, it makes paint act the way you want it to act, bottom line. And then what I like to do is I like to choose an emphasis. So emphasis is a focal point or what it's about. So where would you put an emphasis on that piece? Well, it sort of feels like it goes there. Because the lines are intersecting there. And so I am going to make that the focal point. And so I choose a color and just so carefully, I start painting. <laughs> well, and I also want to point out, you didn't use a regular pencil, you used a water soluble pencil. And so it's dragging into your paint, which is really cool. Yeah, it's a way of getting shading without <laughs> yes, I, I like hard. the way you're cleaning your brush. Oh. I keep looking over at you and you're just rubbing it on yourself. Yeah, it, or, or you know, if you're civilized <laughs> on, on a, on a We're studio. We're not civilized right, you around know. here. We're artists. Yeah. No, I, I like to rub it on my apron because I like the way that a dry brush feels. And so I don't want this brush to hit the water. Oh. So I am using a couple different colors of the same color, a couple different shades. So I'm, so kinda, I'm kind of amazed how much color you have. And part of that is that the blacks is mixing in and now I see you're putting white in there. And like, so two colors have actually become like seven colors. Yeah, you don't want it to be static and boring. So, you know, choose, what's your favorite color? Let's say turquoise. Yes. Choose a couple different shades of turquoise for your, for your emphasis, for your focal point, okay? Then what I do after I do that, I like to bring everything else to ground zero, e even playing field. So I'm gonna take white. Now, did I clean my brush? No. Nope. I did not, which means, is it gonna stay white? Ooh. No, but it's gonna blend and it's gonna be okay-ish. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna brush it right up against what I've already painted. And I wanted to get, to, to get it blending on the canvas itself and have the canvas do the work for me and have the, the dry paint paintbrush and the, and the colors do the work for me. And obviously because your canvas is pre-gessoed, you're having to use less paint, it's quicker, it's faster, you're just basically, it, everything is spreading much more easily. Yeah, you can, I mean, if you don't gesso that canvas first, you will use, oh, five times the amount of paint and you'll have a carpal tunnel. <laughs> By the way, you are moving so fast. And I think that's maybe part of the expressionism part of this. I think so. And, and I want to see a brush stroke. You know, I don't want to blend it out so it's this perfection. I, I want you to, to, to move fast. If you really want it to go um, very, very expressive, use your non-dominant hand. Oh. So then, can I control this at all? No. But I'm really going to get a sense and a feel of... So you're that just playing nature. with paint yeah. and having a good time and not worrying about things, oh no, what are you doing now? So I am having a good time, exactly like you said, but one of the things that I want to make sure I have besides emphasis is value. Now I don't mean this costs you $100. <laughs> what I mean is light and dark. So you need to make sure that you add something. That's now that's light. a brush that we all have with us at all times. And it's the best one. It really is. Uh, a little bit of hand finger painting in there will give you a blend that you don't have to work hard at um, at all. So now I've got that happening. It's a little boring. Well, I, I didn't want to <laughs> say anything, Gina. It's a little boring. It just needs some, some color interest. So I like to do something that's unusual. So add uh, something that's unexpected to, to 
support that so emphasis. This is fascinating to me. You started with this pink and went gray. You added a little bit of blue for the contrast. Now we're into some deep turquoise. You're throwing green and yellow on there. You're painting with your fingers. We're just going crazy. And I want it to look different. See how I skipped across the canvas here? Mm -hmm. So it looks like, uh, you know, a skip. Whereas here I'm brushing it more. Um, you want to have variation in texture. And texture is another important key. Now I think in mixed media we overdo texture. I always say what's missing in mixed media is restraint. Hold yourself back people. Uh -huh. You might now know how to do 40 things. Pick two. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do like a little bit of So you're just rubbing the texture. paint away? Are you using just a plain just paper a towel? Baby wipe. Oh. So it's got a little bit of cleaner in there already. And into the wet layer. Why? That's why. It's oh going to gosh. transfer. It's going to print some of that thick paint. So is it partially because you're moving so fast, this paint is still wet, so you're able to pick it up. Partially because the canvas is gessoed, so you're able to get that paint off. Wow. And somewhere, this is just so cool. Do you think it has enough value? Um, I would like more. I agree. I, I, good answer. Um, I think it needs something. And what, what often is missing when I teach in class is people are afraid to add that extra really dark element. And if you're not sure where to add it, put it near your emphasis. Because where is your eye going to be drawn if there's something dark on the canvas? Oh, to the dark spot. It's going to be drawn to the emphasis. That's when you can do all sorts of interesting things. You can do dots knock them down a little bit. You can take this and Whoa! do a little extra um, And is that going to dry dimensionally because it's acrylic? Yeah, because it's heavy body and acrylic, it's not going to lose its body for you. That is so cool. And it gives you just an extra little visual pop. Um, when in doubt, a little red to end is always a good idea. That's so neat. And now I love it. We've gone from hotel sketch to amazing abstract expressionism. We've worked quick. We haven't judged ourselves. That's right. This has been so much fun. Thank you, Dina. You're so welcome.